Uh, good morning. Thank you all for coming. Uh, it's a pleasure every year to welcome people from uh, all over the country. Actually, we also have international uh, people this year, uh, one all the way from Egypt. Um, basically, uh, let me go through mainly logistics and uh, tell you how it's going to work this year. Uh, Jeff. Okay, the big thank you to these people right here. Uh, we just changed uh, CME director this year after Robert Antuno running the course for the previous five or six years. Robert Martin uh, was uh, baptized in fire. Uh, Long Island Live was definitely a bit of a stressful experience. Uh, Peter Sandra helped him in the transition, <laughs> but it was stressful for him as well. Uh, Marilyn is a veteran, doesn't care anymore. Uh, she's, uh, she's good. And Maria Colas is my research nurse, and Mimi is my inevitable uh, clinical coordinator. So they were, they were veterans also and handled it very well. And Jeff is the essential um, master of uh, engineering, AV, transmissions, and whatnot. Last year, he had to work with a lot of problems. The fiber optic cable wasn't working. We had to do internet. But this year, we have these beautiful 4K projectors, which will be receiving 190 super high def Olympus scope transmission with the fiber optic cable. So you will see the highest definition transmitted live endoscopy uh, uh, feasible by current uh, you know, human technology. Um, I guess you could use alien technology. So anyway, uh, so this is, this is gonna be good. Actually, to quote uh, Jeff Smulovic right here, uh, when he saw these uh, projectors and he does courses all over the world, these are better than sex. So let's see, let's see if he's right. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's uh, go to uh, the rest of the team here. Uh, John Collins is our CEO. You heard from our COO. We really appreciate the support of administration. Rita Roberts is uh, the VP for our endo unit. Uh, and Rich Rivera is the VP for our practice. They were essential in obtaining funds and support for the course. Um, half, half the budget of the course is covered by Winthrop, and trust me, that's a very big budget. Uh, Winthrop IT is very important to interface with uh, Jeff there and make sure everything runs okay with AV. Uh, endoscopy unit then is our nurse manager, and Asina is the, the chief biliary nurse who is going to run everything and make sure everybody has the equipment they want. She, she is very familiar now with what Dr. Zhou wants and Dr. Inui, so we have it all ready for them. A little coffee in the endo room, it's all, it's all good for them. Uh, Abe Peller is our chief of uh, endoscopic anesthesia. We need one because four of our rooms have general anesthesia machines and practically maybe two-thirds of the cases we do now uh, require general anesthesia. All the fellows on force will be there assisting the, the uh, uh, international visitors. And then the GI practice, you know, pre-authorizing these procedures is a nightmare. You know, nothing we do has a code or, or even is done by most centers in the U.S. So, you know, you can imagine that requires a lot of effort by a lot of people. And media services and external affairs have handled the marketing for the course. And the animal lab is going to be busy on Sunday. It was quite a feat to open the animal lab on a Sunday, but we did it. And uh, this is going to be for eight select people to do a very interventional one-on-one uh, -on -one instruction on POEM, ESD, and suturing. And obviously, there's this really too many people here to, to name. Um, very important, our sponsors and our exhibitors, as I said, half our budget, which probably nearly $180,000 is covered by these companies. Uh, mainly these uh, sponsors here, uh, uh, the platinum and the gold ones, and also these exhibitors. And thanks to all of you, because, you know, if this room doesn't have attendees, uh, you know, we cannot really go anywhere. And obviously we have even more on the web. You know, that's probably cannibalizing our attendance here, because every year for the last four years we have offered this for free on the web, and we had like at least 60 to 100 people watching online the last uh, two years. We'll see what uh, the uh, uh, amount of people signed on is this year. And it's on longislandlive.org. Um, and as I said, it's for free. We also archive this, the whole course for free in, on the internet. These are the cases. They are in your syllabus. Uh, three poems, for, including for challenging things like jackhammer, achalasia post heller, five VSDs on colon, esophagus, and stomach. 
one endoscopic polyromatomy, probably the first live polyromatomy in the US, maybe in the world. Uh, it's a new procedure, very similar to POEM, uh, one EFTR and one STIR. So you're in for a treat. That's really the, 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 the big claim to fame of our course. You're really showing what can be done endoscopically. And now, you know, I've been showing three poems live every year. Some people say, like, three poems? Why? Well, you know, because poem is poem. It's the first successful notes. It's the king of procedures. It's revolutionizing endoscopy, et cetera, et cetera. But you know what? It's probably my destiny, too. <laughs> Just to show you a few examples, in case you don't believe me. So uh, Tuesday, I'm coming back from Cairo. I was there in the Egyptian DDW. So I step out of security and run into these nice people over here. Uh, this is the poem patient I'm doing this morning who is coming to New York from Qatar. So I just ran into her right out of security. And what are the odds of that? Um, also, our flight was a connecting flight for the flight that was hijacked. So for three hours, we're in a cafe there discussing uh, her poem and making sure she stays on the liquid diet. So anyway, so this is, this is her brother and sister. And I did, uh, for the HIPAA compliance officers, I did get permission uh, to show this patient. Uh, she was actually very ecstatic that her brother took this picture with his much better phone than mine. But then that's the only thing. I, you know, some of you are regular. So when you came last year, Haruhiro show, showed a picture of my wife and me when we accidentally ran into each other in Switzerland where I was on vacation and where he was, I don't know, uh, with Stefan. So yeah, it happened again this year. We again ran into each other in the Geneva airport accidentally. He just, actually, I didn't see him. He zoomed by. My wife showed him and said, oh, there's Haru here again. I'm like, this, this can't be. So yeah, so I guess poem is, poem is if I try to escape poem, it's still going to chase me around. So it, it's the way it is. So finally, some logistics um, breaks. Please visit our exhibitors. We definitely made sure they are very centrally located uh, around the food. Uh, end of the day is always kind of a rolling end. Uh, the diehards who stay will be rewarded for maybe an extra half hour usually. Uh, I know Jeff doesn't want me to even think of this. Um, faculty disclosures, please mention your disclosures. It's a CME activity. And for all of you feel the CME service, so we know what we're doing well and what we're not. Um, and then, again, we're going to archive the whole course for free. I know this is really, you know, affecting our, uh, our, our you know, on-site attendance, but, you know, that we have been doing it. We have the previous three years with all the insane cases that were done those years, uh, safely, mind you, all of them. Uh, in 2013, 2014, and 15, we're going to archive the new course within hours, maybe a day or two, on the, on the website at uh, www.winthropendoscopy.org as an educational resource. And now, you know, I will, uh, it will be my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker for the fourth year, I believe, uh, this year to, uh, to give us the, the Peter Stevens Memorial Lecture. Peter Stevens is, a, is an icon in interventional endoscopy despite dying at a young age uh, from prostate cancer uh, uh, four years ago now. He was, uh, we, he was my um, advanced fellowship mentor, uh, did two years with him. And then I was for six years his partner. Where the two of us were the only people doing ERCP at Columbia for six years in a row, scoping from eight to midnight. And you know we really, you know, we, we were inseparable. Uh, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer six months after I left to come to Winthrop do my own uh, program here. And you know it's 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 really you know an extremely sad situation. He died at age 49. That's my age currently. And it was a big loss uh, for me, but also a big loss for uh, endoscopy, at least in New York. I mean, he's trained countless fellows. And it's not the training, it's not the tricks, it's not the skills. It's, it's the, the love of advanced endoscopy. It's, it's the fact that even though he had two kids and a wife that you know, were clamoring for him, he would, he would sit there with me and go toe to toe, me being, you know, uh, just you no, know, no kids, you know, and really invested in that uh, all the way, you know, until midnight, and, and and love it, and practically, you know, the only reason he went home is because he felt guilty. But you know, he really loved what he was doing. I mean, I, there are not too many people that put it all on the line for their work and love it to that degree. And you know, he he taught me that, and you know, it's it's uh, I'm, I'm 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 really very grateful. So now, without further ado. Chris Gostad from the Mayo Clinic will uh, will proceed with the keynote lecture.